Over the last several weeks, I've had something happen that uh, I want to share with you. Um, I don't know how to say this. It's, um, uh, it's, it's, it's a, a simple teaching, but I've been in touch with pastors all over the world, and they've, one pastor was so quiet while I was sharing, and I said, are you there? We were over the phone. I said, are you there? He goes, yes. And he said, keep talking. I said, but you're not responding. He said, Brother Steve, I'm taking notes. He said, I can't believe what you're sharing. Yesterday, someone that was with me started crying as I shared this. I'm Steve Hill, for those of you that are not familiar with us and our ministry. And I'm just a drug addict saved by grace. And I've been privileged to be part of several great revivals. The Argentine Revival, lived there for seven years. And the Pensacola Revival, Brownsville, five years, preached to four million people and traveled all over the world. And, and I've just, to me, it's just all just a miracle because I go, you know, I'm, I'm nobody. And, um, and people go, no, you've preached to millions. You're, you're Steve Hill. And I go, no, I'm just a drug addict saved by grace. Always be like that, man. Be the, try to be the most humble person in the room, okay? What a contest, okay? See, you can be the most humble. You're nobody, okay? And I know the Bible says we can approach the throne of grace with authority, okay? But ro how you really approach God is just on your face, okay? You crawl up to Him. He's, he's not some sugar daddy, you know, Papa Noel, some Santa Claus, you know, that you go to for stuff. He's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And I approach every day when I approach Him. It's like this awe and this reverence. But I want to I wanna just fix something that may be going on in your life. And it's, uh, this is biblical. And uh, it has to do with your relationships. And many of you that are watching this have all kinds of problems. And let me tell you why you have problems. You have problems because you got too much going on in your life. See, God has called each and every one of us with a holy calling. Okay, and some He's given five talents, some three, some two, some one. And others, you know, are just operating in this just mystical world. They don't know what's going on and they think they're a pastor or they think they're an evangelist or they think they're a prophet and they, they just don't know. Allow me please, to humbly teach you something that may be with you, I hope, the rest of your life. And Jesus, in John chapter 6, see, Jesus was a miracle worker, agreed? Right. I mean, everybody followed him. Why? He clothed the naked. He fed the poor. He healed the sick. He was, he was awesome, man. He took care of people, okay? He paid his taxes, you know, in an unusual way. He, you know, Peter went fishing and they caught a fish. And it's always interesting to me that out of the mouth of the fish came the tax money, not, you know, 50 bucks extra or 200 bucks so they could go down to, you know, Steak and L or some restaurant and party. No, just enough for the taxes. I love that about Jesus. Give me this day my daily bread. Some of you that are watching, you don't need a ton of money. If you had a ton of money, you would shipwreck. You need to pray every day for that day's needs. And here's what Jesus said in John chapter 6. And let this teaching sink into you. It's my life. He had a multitude following him. Read it for yourself. A multitude. And, he, and they followed him because of stuff. So many people follow Jesus because of stuff. Fame. Fortune. Notoriety. You name it. Big church. Big this. Big that. Take it from me, I've been around big. Big will kill you. Big, if you're not careful, will suffocate you. Find a quiet place. Get alone with God and say, Jesus, this is all too much to handle. So Jesus had this crowd following him. He turned around and he said, okay, eat my flesh, drink my blood. He started preaching the hard, heavy, deeper things of God. And what did they do? They looked at him and they said, this is too much for us. What did Jesus do? He didn't chase after them. 
And this is where so many of us get it wrong. We think God's going to change his theology, change his philosophy, change his way of thinking because we're not following him. No, Jesus didn't chase after him and he's not going to chase after you because you don't want to do this or do that. He's got orders. Remember, he's a commander in chief. He says you're going to do this and you do it or he's going to walk away. He'll find somebody to do it. And that's exactly what happened in John chapter six. He turned around and said, they all left. Okay. And he turned around and he said, how about you boys? This is Steve Hill paraphrased. How about you boys? And they said, where are we going to go? You have the words of eternal life. And he said, okay, come on. Isn't that amazing? Where I'm talking to folks right now, man, all you think about is 100, 200, 300, 400, 500. 800. If I can get to 2,000, I'll have a mega church. When I have a mega church, I'll have position. Look what Jesus did. Follow the Lord, would you? Jesus could have had the most powerful church in all the land. Everyone was chasing after him except the religious leaders. And so what does he do? He walks off with his dozen. One of them was a backslider. One of them, you know, was a betrayer. But he walks off with them. Let me show you something. I've got here a plate. You know what this is? What, what dimension is it? What is this? Is it a square? Is it a rectangle? And it's a circle, okay? This is a circle. This represents your life, okay? Your life Many of you, your circle is too big. This represents all your friends. This represents the things that you do. Many of you are going, yes, 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 yes. You do everything. And that's why you're so burned out. This is the multitude that says that we're following Jesus. And Jesus said, hey, do this, 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 or hasta la vista. He had a plan. And they're not fitting into the plan? Hasta luego. He's gone. Okay? Many of you need to look at your circle. See, my circle's not like this. I don't have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of friends, you know, around me, counseling me, guiding me in this stuff. Okay? Speaking into me. Oh, I know thousands of people all over the world. And they're my, they're my friends. But Jesus had a lot of people that knew him but he had just a few. Remember, he had 12. One of them was a backslider. And then he had really 11. And then he had three, Peter, James, and John. Then he had John. Who got the revelation? John. Why? He was the closest to Jesus. How come Matthew didn't get the revelation? Hey, God does what he wants to do. Okay? So I'm asking you right now, as I close this little teaching, take a look at your circle. This is why many of you are struggling. It's too big. You got too much stuff going on. Okay, you can't be a pastor, a youth leader, a used car salesman, a father, a mother. The list goes on. You know, hundreds and hundreds of things. I draw a circle. I'm an evangelist. And I'm also a pastor emeritus of a great church in Dallas. But I have a circle. And I stay in that circle, and this isn't it. My circle is this. Okay, my circle is small. It has a few friends, godly friends. Now, two of my friends that were in this circle were David Wilkerson and Leonard Ravenhill. They've died and gone on to be with Jesus. Okay? I've, and I've had... Right now, I have godly men and women in my circle. My wife is part of this circle. My ministry is part of this circle. People call me and ask me if I'll do this type of conference or this or that. And I go, no. Oh, why, Brother Steve? They want to hear you. And I go, I can't do it. Why? It's not in my circle. It's not what I do. Okay? If a pastor says I can't give an altar call when I come preach at his church, then I go, I can't come. Why? In my circle, I give altar calls. This is what I do, okay? Stay inside that circle. Are you understanding with your finances? If you want this, this right here is a beamer. 
This right here is a Mercedes. This right here is a million dollar house. You don't have the budget for that. You may have a mental desire for it, but you really don't have the money and you're gonna go into debt. Get back inside your circle, okay? Buy what you can afford, okay? Quit being this spontaneous, just lover of money, lover of pleasure more than lover of God. Draw yourself a circle, stay inside that circle and make your sure your circle is the same size as Jesus. Oh, you can have friends, but keep this tight and you're going to find, you're going to go through life with the favor of God. I love you. Thank you for listening and respond to us. Let us know if this has helped. I love you.